the very nature of consciousness, I would suggest, has two salient defining characteristics that distinguish it from other things that are not consciousness. Right? Defining characteristics, if you like. And one is, in the very nature of consciousness, it entails the experience of knowing, of cognizance of knowing. To be conscious means to know. So as I gaze in your direction and I note your clothing, I know that you are clothed, that you're not naked. I know that you're clothing of a certain kind. I know the color or the colors of your clothing. I know that. And I know many other things. And I don't need to explain to you what knowing is because you know what I'm saying already. Otherwise, you would have already fallen asleep because you wouldn't know anything I'm talking about. So the cognizance, the sheer act of knowing, is a salient feature of consciousness. But there's another one as well, and that is because we are conscious, we experience appearances. So I gaze in your direction, and without, even before knowing that that is clothing, before knowing that you're a human being, I'm getting appearances. And I hear a sneeze, and I hear the sound of a sneeze. Without knowing that it's a sound of a sneeze, I hear, like that. And I hear that, and I sense that, and I experience. These are qualia. Consciousness has in its very nature the, the ability to experience appearances of all kinds. Sensory, mental, somatic, psychological, and so on. So consciousness, in the very nature of being conscious, we experience appearances arising, and we know. I not only sense black, but I know you're wearing black clothing. Right? So that's the cognitive aspect. But there's another element of it as well, of consciousness and of the mind, uh, which is equally important, and it is truly wondrous, and that is the mind or consciousness is not simply a detecting a, a, a measurement system. It doesn't merely detect what is real, what is actual. With our minds, we can not only detect what is real, we can imagine what could be. So reality consists, broadly speaking, of the realm of the actual, which is already true. There are already galaxies, there's already DNA, there are already electrons, there are already so many things that we can be aware of by looking closely. But reality consists not only of the, of the actual, but possibilities are real. There's a real possibility that within the next five seconds I'll raise my hand. Could have, decided not to. But nobody doubts that I could have. That was a possibility. Now, there's no possibility that I raise the, this right hand in the last five seconds, but I could in the next five. And so the realm of possibility, we can imagine. We can imagine. The power of imagination, the power to mentally explore the realm of possibilities, and the realm of possibilities is just as real as the realm of actualities. In other words, possibilities are real. If possibilities were not real, then the world would be frozen because only the actual would be true and there would be no possibility of change. Change is possible, therefore possibilities are real.